Hey everyone, how's it going? I've come out here to film in my local park today because um, I've had an urge recently to read some more nature writing. I talked about this in a recent book haul video and, um, and I discovered this book prize recently um, which is all for nature writing and you know I love a book prize. Um, so I want to talk about the shortlist for that book prize today and that is the Wainwright Golden Beer Book Prize for Nature Writing. And, um, and I just thought this is such like a perfect alignment that this um, this book prize is having its shortlist. Um, the shortlist was announced at the beginning of July and then the winner is going to be announced uh, August 15th and, um, and so yeah it'll give me a good chance to um, read a couple, at least a couple of the entries. Um, so I thought I would go through the shortlist today. Um, these are the seven books that have been nominated for the prize and I'll talk about them all a bit and the ones I'm most interested in reading. Um, so first on the list is Robert McFarlane's book Underland and I talked about this recently um, because I went to see him speak a few weeks ago at the South Bank Center and he was talking about his process of creating this book, um, traveling to lots of locations, um, underground locations around the world where he could actually see, sort of excavate and see like layers of time um, imprinted on the rocks and, and how there's all this history of the world that's packed underneath us. Um, but he um, found in all these places too how these locations have been rapidly changing like he goes to the bottom of a glacier and um, yeah to, to lots of really dramatic locations and uh, and yeah and the the cover of this is absolutely gorgeous and you know Robert McFarlane's a very famous well-known writer so he looks at the changing nature but also how our language is changing too and how we articulate um, how we see the world uh, so yeah I'm very keen to read this then another book that I'm really interested in reading is Kate Humble's book called Thinking on My Feet and this is her documenting her time walking in nature. Um, it's a very RuPaul thing like walking children in nature. Um, but, um, but I went through this period um, several years ago where I was waking up really early in the morning and I would just go for walks around the city or to, to local parks and that sounds really dodgy but but, um, but I really just enjoyed walking around the city um, early in the morning when nobody else was up and you know it felt like um, this of this space just sort of like belonged to me you know it's 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 weird how when you walk early in the morning it's almost different mental space in the world than when you're just walking around normally during the day anyway she documents her peri period um, walking uh, out in the countryside and sort of connecting with nature and how you know that's healthy in both um, connecting us with the natural world but also you know bringing us peace of mind um, to, to go for long walks and and all of that and um, yeah and that's something I want to do again more so um, so yeah I'm keen to, to read this then um, Juliet Blacksland wrote a uh, book called The Easternmost House where she spent a year living on, in this house in the, the coastline um, where the coastline is rapidly eroding away and she could actually see the progress over the course of a year as the coastline was coming closer to the house and how this, this house wasn't going to, to last um, for much longer because the, the coastline was going to erode underneath it and um, yeah so it's obviously talking about how this landscape is rapidly changing. Uh, then Julia Blackburn has wrote this really interesting sounding book called Time Son, um, which is looking at the, the, um, the space of Doggerland, which is this area above the North Sea which used to connect uh, the, uh, England, England uh, with the mainland of Europe and how not, that's now underwater but, um, but she sort of excavates this area of land by looking at different maps um, and um, by by telling different um, stories and tales and legends of that time and um, recreates these these songs of, of that period. So it sounds like a really fascinating um, book. Um, so I'm quite keen on that as well. Um, then there's this book called The Wilding by Isabella Tree. Um, and you couldn't get a more perfect surname for an author to be nominated for a, a nature writing prize um, than, than to have a surname of Tree. And she and her partner um, lived on a farm which had been massively over farmed over time and uh, and the the, the land um, was just not really good anymore for farming and so they took the radical decision to um, just let the, the the landscape around them go wild and this farming area go wild and all of the the natural plants um, from the area just sort of came back to it but they also found a lot of the the natural wildlife around them um, came back as well and they 
they found that it, the, the landscape rejuvenated a lot more quickly than they expected it to. And, um, and so she writes about that, that process of discovering that and letting our land go wild rather than, you know, having it these sort of mass farming areas. Um, so yeah, that sounds quite interesting. And then Mark Cocker wrote a book called Our Place. I um, mean, he's been a nature writer for many years. He's written many well-regarded books. And he writes about our um, connection with the land, that we feel this urge to want to be in nature, and yet we live in these, uh, many of us live in these very urban landscapes and and trying to reconcile those feelings of, of wanting to be in nature, but also to be in a city and um, and talking about the alternatives we, we can do to more incorporate nature into um, our urban environments. And um, yeah, and I, of course, I love a fox and there's a fox on the cover. So, um, And then finally, um, there's a book called Out of the Woods by Luke Turner. This is a memoir. And um, I actually tried to read this book earlier this year and just didn't really get on with it. Um, it's another book that has a beautiful cover, um, but he talks about his experiences with depression, um, his experiences with bisexuality, and how he starts going out into parks um, to reconnect with nature and reconnect with himself. And, um, and yeah, just something about the style of the narration I just really didn't get on with so I think I read 60 or 70 pages I mean maybe it would have developed better if um, I'd I'd read more into it but you know this I think I have a sort of minority opinion about this because um, I know somebody else um, it was one of their favorite books of the year so far and um, and it's been having really good reviews so um, it might just be me so those are all the books on the list and yeah I'm quite keen to to read some nature writing now because it's been quite a long time when I was younger I used to read a lot more and I was very into Thoreau and reading about all of that but I also read a lot about intentional communities and when I was a late teenager and traveled to a number of different intentional communities around America and thought about moving to one and living in one um, where you know, I spent some time um, working on a farm and milking cows and and working in the garden but um, but it's been I've been living in London in the city for many years and so that yeah, feels like a good time to read connect with nature. So let me know um, if you've read any of these, if you think any of them sound good and you're interested in reading them and yeah it'll be interesting to see which one wins on August 15th. Um, so hope you're doing well and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye!